I'm here with Linda Baumgarten, Curator of Textiles and Costumes at the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation, and today we're going to be discussing 18th century shoemaking as it pertains to textiles. So Linda, tell us about some of the popular textiles that would have been used for ladies' shoes in the 18th century. Ladies' shoes in the 18th century came in a variety of materials. The most common, of course, is leather, but since we're talking about textiles today, uh, you have actually two varieties of textiles that were popular for shoes. One would be a hard surface wool known as a worsted, either in a damask pattern or a solid pattern, uh, but the most fashionable were silk textiles. Why would Martha Washington want shoes that were made from silk versus another textile? Martha would have chosen silk for her best, most formal shoes. Uh, this would be an occasion such as a ball or her wedding, perhaps. Uh, so silk was considered the uh, most fashionable and most expensive material for shoes. Sort of like uh, getting your wedding shoes dyed to match from a textile today. Linda, is there any evidence of women making dresses from the same fabric that they would have made their shoes from? We sometimes assume that women would match their shoes to their gowns, but actually that's very seldom indicated, at least by the surviving examples. In the Colonial Williamsburg collection, we have one pair of shoes that matches a gown, and all the rest of the shoes are of textiles that would not have matched the gown. Uh, it apparently was only considered important for the most formal occasions. Linda, could you talk about some common trims that would be on shoes from 1750 to say 1790? Women's shoes usually, especially the textile shoes, were bound with a tape or a ribbon around the edges. That sometimes can be a contrasting trim. You also occasionally find, uh, especially later in that period, a ribbon rosette of some sort. But really the most important trimming was the removable metal buckle that might have been made of with paste stones or silver or even gold for special occasions. Just like there are certain fashions today in shoes, what would have been some trends in the 18th century? Well, just like today, shoes did go through style evolutions along with the evolution in clothing. One of the major trends we see in the second half of the 18th century is the evolution from high heels for dressy shoes to flat shoes that seemed more appropriate for the columnar neoclassical gowns that came into fashion in the late 18th century. Linda, in looking at Martha Washington's silk wedding shoes, where would that silk might have been sourced from? Martha's wedding shoes were imports from Britain and at that time, British had uh, silk industries in several areas, but the most prolific silk producing area was in Spitalfields near London. The raw materials would have been imported, uh, but the silks designed and woven in that Spitalfields area. Linda, there are a pair of shoes in the Colonial Williamsburg collection that have an interesting connection to George Washington. Would you care to describe those? The shoes are wonderful examples. They came with a family history that they were Grandmother Bowen slippers when she danced with George Washington. Uh, the shoes are actually London imports uh, labeled by a shoemaker named John Hose from England, and they're made of really lovely brocaded silk. So they were very special shoes worn to a ball. Uh, the only problem is the family didn't record for us who Grandmother Bowen was or where she lived. So we would love to know more about them. We hope you enjoyed shoe shopping with Martha Washington. Join us again for more explorations of life with the Washington.